Hey guys, real quick video for you here today. I got another 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery in from LitTime. If you remember, we reviewed this battery in a prior video and while I was disassembling it, I had damaged it beyond repair, unfortunately. Uh, so I couldn't really do the high rate discharge test that I had planned on. So I went and purchased another one and these are actually down to $230 for Black Friday. So it's a very good deal. I also picked up a new inverter because when I did the test of the SOK battery, uh, I found that the fan in my best tech inverter that I've been using for a number of years was no longer functioning. So here's the deal with this video today. Uh, the new inverter does not work. I have a return case open with Amazon, so I'm going to send it back. But before I do that, we're going to take a look and see what we got and why it was uh, falsely advertised per se. Um, and then I'm also going to take apart the best tech inverter and show you why I don't like that one as well. Originally, I was just going to repair the best tech inverter because I thought, okay, maybe the fan is just seized up. Well, the fan is not seized up. When you take a look at the inside, you'll see some things I just, I don't like. And uh, rather than fixing something that's poorly engineered, in my opinion, I was going to go purchase another one. So this video is probably going to be a bit of complaining. All right, so let's first take a look at the new inverter that I ordered. And we'll go from there because this is, there's a lot of thoughts going on here right now. I need to get them organized. This is a 12 volt, 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter from Reliable Electric. It's also known as uh, WZRELB, I believe. It's just some generic China uh, manufactured inverter. But these Reliable Electric inverters have actually been quite reliable, at least for resistive low inductive loads. I wouldn't put anything high inductive on them like, a, like an air compressor or a vacuum cleaner. Um, but they are perfect for testing batteries and that's what I needed. And I want to be clear that this problem is more of Amazon's fault. This is not a reflective opinion of the reliable electric inverters. So this inverter came up in the Amazon warehouse deals program. If you're not familiar with Amazon warehouse deals, it's used goods. It's, uh, you know, things that may have been damaged in the warehouse, things that may have been returned or otherwise procured and they're resold as used. And I've purchased quite a few Amazon warehouse deals items in the past. I've purchased computer parts, that big uh, 10,000 watt Ames inverter I have came from Amazon warehouse deals. The problem is <laughs> this thing doesn't work and that's extremely frustrating because this was about $240. Here is what Amazon says on their website about the Amazon warehouse deals program. All of our products go through a quality check by us prior to being sold. We thoroughly test functional and physical condition of each item and give the product a specific grade before selling it. Based on our quality check, each item will be assigned one of four evaluations, like new, very good, good, and acceptable. This inverter was described as used condition, very good. And it says in further notes, looks and functions as if it were new, item may not come in the original packaging. Not a problem. I don't care if this inverter has a ding mark on it. I don't care if it's missing a screw. You know, I just need something to run down batteries for my battery test. And this was a perfect inverter and it was about $60 off the price of a new one. So what the heck? So one of the first odd things I noticed about this inverter are these uh, terminals on the back here. This hardware looks very uh, dirty or corroded or, you know, I don't know what you would call this. You know, it is a serrated flange nut, but then we've got this washer that is uh, heavily rusted on both sides. Uh, we have a lock washer that is slightly rusted on the edges there. Uh, so it's got a little mark on the top here to indicate this is a 12 volt inverter. It is half rubbed off for some reason. And there is a scrape mark over here. I don't know what that's from. Again, don't really care that it looks like that. So in trying to troubleshoot why this inverter would not work, I opened it up and removed these screws. And by the way, these screws are also very rusty and uh, a number of them are stripped. You know, it's clearly been taken apart before. I was able to get all of them out despite some of them not having any threads left except for uh, this one down here, which I could not get out successfully. Now it didn't look like that when I started. It was about half of what you see there. And then my attempts had uh, further worsened it despite even trying to pry the back with a flat tip screwdriver, it still would not come out. So not a problem. We don't really need that screw out anyway because being in the back corner, it just functions like a hinge. So we pull the cover off of our inverter here. Looks pretty clean inside. Uh, the first thing I check are the fuses. So you can see two, four, six, and uh, there are two more over here is eight. Found two that were blown. So you look at these fuses here, and you can see they are definitely blown. These are uh, 40 amp fuses. Now I don't have any 40 amp fuses. So for the sake of testing the thing and making sure it actually works, I stuck a pair of 50s in there. I decided to use my bench power supply here to try and turn it on just to make sure, you know, if something were to short out or blow up, there's not gonna be a, a, an issue. So on the front of the inverter, we have it switched off. I'm gonna go ahead and turn up the voltage here. 
So you see we're pulling 2.8 amps and the voltage is not climbing. So this is dead shorted. There is something shorted out inside this inverter. It's not even turned on. Like I said, I can try to turn it on. Nothing's going to happen. You know, the thing is completely dead and is somehow internally shorted. Now I did inspect all of the transistors. You know, there's some there, there's some on the other side. There are no problems. I don't see any burn marks anywhere on this board. You know, there's nothing that looks like it was blown out and the capacitors are bulging. I could stick a thermal camera on here, just take a heat profile of it and probably figure out where the short is pretty easily. Even looking at those bolts down there, those bolts look pretty dark. And uh, I don't know, it just seems like it's seen an excessive amount of heat somewhere. It's not worth my time troubleshooting this. I don't wanna spend time sitting here figuring something out when I paid 200 and was it $30? $230 for this thing. Additionally, I have to wonder what this wire is here that's crimped in with the negatives and it appears to be a yellow green stripe as if it's a ground conductor. Uh, and it's just cut flat off there. So is that supposed to be in there? Is that for a feature that's not being used? Where is that supposed to go in here? Um, is that somehow they bonded the negative to the case maybe? So anyway, it just, it frustrates me beyond belief that somebody said this inverter was tested and fully functional and puts it as very good when the darn thing doesn't even turn on. Nobody has even put even two seconds of time into testing this inverter or that would have been immediately obvious with two blown fuses. So now I have to send this thing back and waste a week of my time. Another one's supposed to be coming here tomorrow, hopefully, but you know, with the holiday and whatnot, I'm actually not gonna get into my test until probably next week. And again, that should not be a, an opinion developed against Reliable Electric. That's more against Amazon's. So next I'm gonna show you what is inside this Best Tech Inverter. This Best Tech Inverter I've used for a number of years for my capacity tests. It's actually been quite reliable throughout my testing. I've put some pretty heavy loads on it. It seems to work every single time. Uh, this is a modified sine wave inverter. Now there are two things that made this inverter originally appealing to me and caused me to purchase this inverter despite knowing it was a, a lower end inverter compared to some other models out there. Number one is that this allowed a minimum input voltage of 9.5 volts. Most other 12 volt inverters are around 10 or 10.5 when they shut down. That's a problem because I need to continue to put power out until the BMS in the battery shuts off for my capacity testing, not the, not the inverter shutting off. I need to know when the BMS in the battery shuts off to get an accurate reflection of the capacity of the battery. The other thing that was appealing to me is that this had an ETL listing. Now it's not stamped anywhere on here that it's been ETL tested, um, but I did manage to find online a certificate for it, and this was about a year or two ago. All right, so I've already taken the screws out of this inverter. Let's go ahead and pull it apart here. And you'll see that this inverter actually comprised of two boards, one in the top half of the shell, one in the bottom half of the shell. And if you sort of follow the wiring here, we have a blue and a brown that come out of each section. And uh, one's gonna be the hot and one's the neutral and they are just kind of wired to these receptacles and they're in parallel. So that means these are probably 1000 watt uh, inverters each here because this is a 2000 watt unit. And then this cable is likely a data communications cable to keep that sine wave in sync because obviously they have to be synced up. But where the real interesting part lies in this inverter is the uh, DC input here. So you see we have six fuses. Look at the connection on the DC bus here. Uh, so these are the fuses here and look at that little gap between the terminals of the fuse. And not only that, look how this wire is adhered to that board. And if you think that's bad, look how this wire is adhered to the board. It's soldered on there and the wire's not even on the board on this side. There's just a giant glob of solder. So when I saw some of these things, I pretty much just decided I'm not gonna bother even trying to fix it. So if we assume each one of these boards is 1000 watts at 12 volts, that's what, 100 amps? 100 amps is gonna be going through this? Does that connection there look like one that should be supporting 80 amps? Doesn't to me. I'm not gonna put this back together, so we're just gonna snip one of these here. All right, so now we can get a better look at this board and uh, this terminal comes in here, that is the positive. You can see there's gaps in there. It's not even properly soldered. In fact, this one doesn't look like it's soldered on at all. So it's soldered on the other side. There's a little tiny drop of solder there on the other side. So this is just, it's like a gigantic pile of crap, to be honest. I don't understand. I don't understand how this has an ETL certification. So yeah, I, I decided this is just, and those are printed circuit boards. No, that is metal. I guess it is metal. I can't even tell if that's metal or printed circuit board. So yeah, when I saw this, I pretty much just decided I won't bother fixing it. Um, now what I could do is remove this whole component here and I could uh, splice directly to these conductors to provide power to the inverter for uh, additional battery testing. Let's see where the fan controller, fan controller is down in there. 
Well, the plug for the fan is I don't see a controller down in there anywhere. Um, I don't see a FET transistor or anything. In fact, I don't see any temperature sensors anywhere. That just looks like a regular ceramic disc capacitor. I don't see a single temperature sensor anywhere. This little green thing here is a temperature sensor. It does say NTC1 on the circuit board, so that must be the control circuit for the thermal. I don't see any more of those anywhere. There's none on this board. There are none on the heat sinks. It controls the fan, and the fan's not seized up. Fan works fine. You know, if you apply 12 volts to it, the fan spins. So it must be the control circuit. So if that's damaged and not functioning, that tells me that other safety features of this might also not be working that are thermally reliant because this case got really hot before I caught it. So yeah guys, I know this video is not too interesting and there was a bit of complaining, but the whole purpose of this video was just to show you what's inside the old Best Tech Converter. The irritating problem I've experienced with Amazon in the reliable inverter. I did order a brand new one. It's not their warehouse deals this time and that's supposed to be delivered tomorrow. I am hoping to get a video out with some Black Friday deal information later this week. Um, other than that, let me know what you guys think. As usual, hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.